Do you guys want to improve your aim to where it's almost perfect on MW3? Well, you've came to the right place. Because I'm going to let you in on some secrets that will instantly make you more accurate and shoot like this. I like the way you kiss me. I can tell you miss me. I can tell it this, 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 this. Not trying to be romantic. I hit it from the back just so you don't get attached. What's happening YouTube? So one thing you're going to want to make sure you have is the right settings before we get any further. Having the right settings are crucial and might be a day and night difference for most people. So if you're not making the most of it, you're holding yourself back massively. I'm now going to go over all the important settings when it comes to aiming. Okay, so I'm first going to go over my horizontal and vertical sensitivity. This actually plays a part when aiming because it's the speed of the left and right stick input. So you're not going to want this too fast, and I would even argue too slow. So 6.6 is a very balanced sensitivity. I see a lot of pros in the CDL running this sense, so I recommend you give it a go. Okay, so for this next part, it's going to be under controller. You're actually going to want to turn off your controller vibration and trigger effects, because this can be very distracting and is unnecessary when playing an online FPS. It's alright for single player games, etc, but there's just no use for it on here. Right, so for the dead zones, the left stick min and right stick min all depends on your controller. If you want to copy all of mine, I'm going to pause it for you now, and whilst it's paused, I'm going to explain why I play and what I do. So with the left stick and right stick min, if you have stick drift, I wouldn't recommend 5, keep it on default, which is 10, and go up from there until you don't see any more drift. Right and left stick max, I like to have that on 90. And lastly, for the L2 and R2 button dead zone, I believe for Xbox it is RT and LT. Have zero, so there's next to no input when aiming and clicking the trigger. Which means you'll have the upper hand against someone who has a higher trigger dead zone. Next section under controller is going to be aiming. And for this, you want your aim response curve type on dynamic. This will make you the most snappy when aiming onto a target. Every pro I know uses this, so it's quite a big setting. A little further down, you should see ADS Sense Multiplier. Make sure this is on 1. And Custom Sensitivity per Zoom, make sure you have this on. For my low zoom, it's 0.8. Also for 2x3x, times, times, and for my 4x5x times, times zoom. The rest are all default, since I don't really use weapons such attachments with that magnification. The reason why I have my important ones on 0.8 is because it makes tracking your opponents a whole lot easier. And for aim assist type, the best is default. It used to be Black Ops, however, that got nerfed, so default is what most players are running now. Right, so scroll up now until you see ADS Sensitivity Multiplier. In order to toggle this setting, you will need to turn off Custom Sensitivity per zoom. Once you've turned that off, come back to this and put it to 1. The default is 1.10. This is a secret setting and you're going to want this on 1, because fun fact, this is what the ADS Sensitivity Multiplier was on MW2. And if you noticed, the aim assist felt weaker when you first played this game compared to MW2. So the setting will make you feel a tad bit better when aiming. Also, don't forget to turn back on your custom sensitivity per zoom after doing this. Next guys, you're going to want to head over to the graphic settings. These are going to be the final settings that will amplify your game before we get into the mechanics. So for the on-demand text of streaming, you're going to want this off. Especially if you're someone that doesn't have the best internet. You don't want to be getting any packet burst when playing. For the world and weapon motion blur, have these off. Film grain all the way to zero, depth revealed off. You don't want any of these to be on because it will interfere with you visually because it makes things harder to see. And if you struggle to see what you're shooting at, it's going to make it impossible to be accurate. Okay, so scroll down to where you see field of view. Obviously, if you have a monitor that supports 120Hz, make sure that's ticked. For FOV, have this on 110. Having a higher FOV actually gives you less visual recoil, so it comes in handy when firing certain weapons on this game. I've gone for 110 because you don't lose aim assist like 120, and if you're someone that also plays Warzone sometimes, 110 is literally meta right now. This is the FOV that DS Biffle runs, shout out to Biffle. And finally ladies and gentlemen, have your first person camera movement on the least, which is 50%. 
because you don't want any shaky camera movements while aiming and trying to kill your opponent. It will be off-putting. Okay, a good way to work on your aim would be to shoot bots. A lot of casual players don't do this and should, because over time it will improve your accuracy. I like to do this before hopping into a ranked game so that my fingers are warm before I start playing. I highly recommend this, especially if you play in the higher divisions on ranked play. Even if you don't, you should still try and do this so you are confident in your ability when you decide to play. I'm going to show you how to set this up and then after a few secrets in game. So have this on FFA. Map, do any small map, scrapyard, rust etc, I'm going to go for rust there. And then for the game rules, so you want the time limit onto 45 minutes, which is basically unlimited. The points, uh, you can honestly have this as, as much as you want. I'm going to go for 100 for the sake of the video though. And then for skip infill, you're actually going to want this on. This is just a little sequence that plays at the beginning of the game. So you're going to want this on because if you have it off, it means you're going to have that whole animation. And it's just a waste of time. Right, next I'm going to move over to team. And then for radar always on, you want this on constant. Right guys, so for gameplay, you're going to want to go to spawn ammo mags. And you want to make sure this is on max, so you don't run out of any ammo when you're actually shooting the bots and warming up. Right, and also as well for the bots, click the little plus under your name. And the amount, it honestly doesn't really matter. For the sake of the video, I'm going to go for 9. But you can actually have as much as 23 bots now, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, for the video, I'm just going to have 9. And difficulty, it doesn't really matter. Like, you're just warming up at the end of the day. Like, it doesn't need to be hard or anything. It's just to get your shot on. Right, now that I've got this set up, guys, um, I'll see you guys in game. Right, guys, so the first thing I actually do when I shoot my bots is basically to try and get my fingers as warm as possible before hopping into a ranked game. So, what I try to do is play as cracked as possible. So, that could be, like, YYs, jump shotting, drop shotting, slide cancelling. Literally anything to do with movement just to get my fingers warm. And then once my fingers are warm, I work on like my recoil. And I'm going to show you guys like how I control my recoil. So then it's ready for like an actual game. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate on the wall. So this is me like not controlling recoil. So me, this is me just shooting and basically hoping for the best. And you notice the bullet trail like just goes straight up. But if I'm controlling recoil, you notice guys there's like a huge difference with like the bullet trail. It's more submerged now. So all you want to do to do this guys is just, you see your right stick, you want to like kind of gently just press it down as you're shooting. So you will basically get something like that. Instead of just doing this. I see a lot of guys saying, oh, like, do you use a zen? How is your, like, how are you shooting so straight? It's because I control recoil. So you basically, you, you want to do something like that. Your bullet trail never wants to be like this. Another thing I want to talk about guys are single fire shots and why they are useful. The reason why you should implement single fire shots into your game is because if an enemy's 30 plus meters out, it's going to give you more precision, making you more accurate. I'm going to show you an example of this. So see these enemies over here? I can just singly just tap my R2 button, and it's a lot more easier to hit these shots. What I like to do is, as well guys, is mix in a bit of both, like some single fire shots with fully automatic. And also guys, you can do this just by tapping either R2 or R2. You don't need to put the weapon in single fire. I'll show you some more examples of this. Watch this. You can do that instead. Yeah, one thing I actually use, guys, that makes it a lot easier to aim and more comfortable while aiming are something called control freaks. A lot of people have been asking me, like, like, what do I play on? Like, what controller do I use and what monitor I have? I'm actually going to provide it for you in this video. And show you why I use them as well. Right guys, so all I use is a standard PS5 controller. As you can see, I don't have any paddles or anything like that. I actually do play claw. But one thing I would recommend are control freaks. They're really, really good because they help with analog comfort. And also, if you've got an extension on the analog stick, it's going to naturally make it a lot easier for you to aim. Like, you're going to be more precise with it. They can range from anything between two to five pound. Like, I do highly recommend you cop them. They do help out a lot, guys. I'm going to put the link in the description. And for the monitor, guys, I use an LG Ultra Gear nano ips i think it's 165 hertz but obviously for the playstation you can only run 120 frames and i believe it's 28 inches and then for the response time and resolution the response time is one millisecond and then for the resolution it's just 1440p another thing i want to go over guys is let's stick aiming and basically what that is is you just abusing your rotational aim assist 
So I'm going to show you some examples on the bot. So this is me constantly moving my left stick. And as you notice guys, I'm getting more aim assist. Whereas if I was just stood still, so I'm mobile, which you should never be on this game by the way, I don't get as much aim assist. I'll show you another example of me uh, shooting without moving the left stick. Obviously I can still aim guys, but you don't get as much aim assist. And like I said before guys, earlier in the video, make sure you like, you're slightly putting your right stick down. So you can control that recoil as well. But you want to be moving your left stick more. So the direction the enemy's moving. So say the enemy moves to the right. You want to be moving your left stick to the right as well. So you can get the aim assist. With that rotational force, you say. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys would like a part two on this topic, let's try and get this to 100 likes. Until the next one.